Have you ever tried to write Django applications in a single file? That's what we're going to try and do in this video and we're going to make use of this cool package that I found called Nano Django. I'm on the GitHub page for Nano Django and you can see it's got nearly 500 stars. And if you look at the About section, you can write Django applications in a single file. So views, models, APIs and async support is also included in this package because it uses Django Ninja. And if your project grows away from a single file and you want to convert it into a normal Django project, there is a utility to do that as well. So we're going to take a look at Nano Django in this video and we're going to also look at UV for managing the environment where we install Nano Django and its dependencies. And as I mentioned, built-in support for Django Ninja as well. So let's dive in and have a look. Now before we get started, I want to thank Datacamp who are sponsoring this video. And Datacamp are currently offering a free access week up until the 10th of November. So you get access to Datacamp Premium, the entire platform is free up until that date. And through Datacamp you can get access to top quality training materials for things like Python, ChatGPT, SQL, Power BI and so on. Now there's a link in the top comment and also in the description of the video if you want to sign up to Datacamp. You can start learning entirely for free, you don't need any card details, up until the 10th of November. Datacamp's a platform that I've used over the years many times to learn Python and SQL and many other technologies. So check out the link in the description and let's move on and get started with Nano Django. Now we're back on the GitHub page here, I'm going to scroll down to the README. And to install Nano Django using pip, we would simply use the pip install Nano Django command. But I'm going to do things using UV. And if you want to know more about UV, check out the previous video we did on that. It should be appearing on the screen now. Now I've opened VS Code where we have an empty app.py file. And I want to install Nano Django using UV and use inline script metadata in order to control the dependencies for this single script. Remember, Nano Django can run as a single script, which will be very useful for prototyping. But we want to run things and have everything self-contained, so we can use inline script metadata for that. And again, check out that UV video if you want to know more about that. Now let's go back to the README and we're going to scroll down a little bit here. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at this section on sharing an app. So Nano Django apps are great for sharing examples and prototypes. You can add this inline script metadata at the top and you can declare your dependencies. I'm going to copy this and let's go back to our file here and I'm going to paste that at the top here. And we have the dependencies array and that's set to a single element here with Nano Django. And the final bit of setup for the moment, if we go back to sharing an app, we need to run this call to app.run at the bottom. So what I'm going to do here is copy this code and let's go back here and paste that in. Now you may be wondering what is the app object and the app object will come from Nano Django itself. We can actually import that in a very similar way as you would instantiate a Flask application or a Fast API application. So let's see an example again. Let's go back to the documentation and what we're going to do is copy the import at the top from Nano Django. We import a Django object. So let's paste that at the top and then we can create the app object by instantiating that Django object. Very similar to Fast API if you've used that. And what we can do with the app object is we can create routes in the application. So again, this is very similar to Flask. We have an app.route decorator and we can pass a path into that. Now let's say we're returning a simple template with some comments. What we can do here is give the route the path of comments and then we define the function here for that route. Let's call the function comments and like all Django views, this is going to take request as an argument. And I'm actually just going to return some text at the moment. So we're going to return an h1 tag with the text here be the comments. Now we can actually run this using UV because we've declared the dependencies in the inline script metadata. So let's go to the terminal and use the UV run command. And this is going to create a temporary environment with Nano Django installed and we can pass the link to app.py. So it's reading the inline script metadata as you can see and then it installs Nano Django and its dependencies and of course Django is one of them, Django Ninja is another. And you can see that what happens here is it automatically applies the default migrations and it asks for a super user's username and I'm going to provide one called admin here. And finally the Django server is actually running so when we run the uv run command and we pass the link to this file here that contains this app.run statement it's actually going to perform all of that setup, the migrations, the super user, and then starting the Django server. And it's going to do that automatically. So if we navigate now to localhost 8000 slash comments, you can see that we get the text, here be the comments. So we're actually serving this route here, and it's the route slash comments. And this is a simple Django view that returns a piece of text. And we're instantiating a Django object on line 6, very similarly as we would do with a fast API object. So I think this is really cool. We have a simple Django application, but let's take this one step further. We want to give the users the ability to add comments and have them saved into a database. 
So for that, we're going to need an HTML template and we're also going to need a Django model for the comments. Now on the left-hand side, let's create a new directory here called templates. And I'm gonna create an index.html template in that directory. And what I'm gonna do in here is paste some code. So we have some boilerplate HTML at the top. So we've got a simple head tag with a title here. And then in the body, we, ha we have a header one tag saying comment box. And we have a form here with a method of post. This is going to allow us to submit a new comment to this comment box and we're going to show this comment box on the page. And every time a user adds a comment, we want that to show up at the top. So in this form here, we have a single input here of type text and that allows the user to add a comment and they can then submit that. So we're gonna view this, but we need to actually return the template. So let's go back to app.py. And at the top of this file, let's import the render shortcut and you'll be familiar with that if you've used Django views before. And then inside the comments function that's decorated with app.route, let's remove the h1 and we're gonna return the render function. We pass the request to that along with the name of the template. And in this case, the template is called index.html. So let's go back to the browser and view this. If we refresh the page, you can see we now have a comment box and we can add a comment and then submit that. But of course, if we go back to Django, we don't have any mechanism for handling this post request at the moment in this view. So let's go to the view here and add a request.method check. We're gonna check if it's a post request and then we can perform some different processing if that's the case. Now, if we go to index.html here, the name of the input is comment. So we can extract that from the post request so let's create a variable here called comment and it's gonna be equal to request.post and that's a query dictionary in Python and we can get a key out of that using the .get method and the key is comment and that comes from the name of the input element. So we have the comment that's been submitted here and what we would want to do with the comment is add it to the database. Now we can't do that because we don't have a model at the moment. So for now, let's just print the comment to the terminal and we can make sure that we're actually extracting that from the post request. What we're going to do above the route here and below the Django object is create a model class and I'm going to call the model comment and that's going to inherit from Django's model class. Now this is a Django app that's entirely in a single file here apart from the template. We could break this out into a models.py file but we're gonna write everything in a single file just for this video. Now of course at the top we need to import the models from Django.db and then we can reference models.model and we're going to add two fields to the comment model. So I'm gonna paste these in here. We have the field for the comment text and that's gonna be a car field and also the date time field when the comment was added to the database and we have auto now add set to true. So the database is automatically going to add the timestamp when this is created. Now when I saved this file, I think it automatically created the migration and you can see that here it's applying app 0001 initial and if we go to the migration file and look at that, Let's look at the migration class. We're creating the model comment and it has the fields that we specified for text and the created field as well as the implicit ID. So we have the migration. The question is, did it apply that migration to the database? Now, if we look at the database.sqlite3 file, what I'm gonna do is open that database and I'm using the VS Code SQLite extension for that. And we can take a look at the database now. And indeed, if we look at this, you can see we now have a table here called app comment. And if we look at the fields on that table, you can see we have the ID and the text field and the created field that we added. So as soon as we saved our file here in app.py after adding the model, the Nano Django process restarted when we did that and it applied the migrations and then ran the migrations against the database. So I'm going to close SQLite Explorer now and we can go back to the comments route that we're defining here. Now let's start by testing if we're actually going to print a comment to the terminal here. So let's go back to the website here and I'm gonna add some random text in here. And if we go back to VS Code, you can see that we are getting that text on the terminal. So what we can do now is take the comment model and we can actually add the new comment to the database. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is use the comment model that we have. And we're going to call .objects.create and we're going to pass the text into that model and we're going to set it equal to the comment that was posted from the front end. And what we can also do on the get request is we can fetch all comments from the database. So we're going to do that with comment.objects.all and then we can set up a context dictionary and add those comments to the context. So we're setting it equal to comment.objects.all and then we can take the context and add it to the render statement as a third parameter. And actually one thing that might make more sense rather than just fetching all of the comments, what we can do is we can order them by the created field. So what I'm going to do is replace .all with .order by and we can pass the minus created into that. 
and that's going to order by the created field from descending order, so from the most recent comment first, and return those and allow us to add them to the context. Now let's test this out. If we go back to our page, let's submit a new comment here, and nothing is happening actually because we're not showing that up in the template. So let's go back to VS Code and let's go to index.html. So we have the form at the top, but we want to add a template for loop below that that's going to iterate over the existing comments and display them on the page. So below the form, let's add a simple HR tag to split this up. And then I'm gonna paste a template for loop in. So if we have comments, we're going to create a UL tag and iterate over those comments and list out the text. Otherwise, if we don't have comments, we can have this message here saying you have no comments yet. And we can save index.html. And let's go back to the browser now and refresh this page. We should now see comments appearing below the comment box. And indeed, that's what we see here. So if I added a new comment here, you can see it appears at the top. It's the most recent comments that are added to the top here. So let's add another one that's a bit more legible, comment one. If I submit that, you can see it appears at the top of the list. So we have this super simple comment box using Nano Django. So it's Django functionality in a single file. And that can be very useful for prototyping. If you do these kind of things with Django or with Nano Django, you get all of the power of Django's models and the ORM. And we have a simple decorator syntax here that's very similar to other frameworks in Python. Let's now move on and we're going to show some of the integration with Django Ninja. So let's imagine we want to expose this comment model over an API. In other words, we want to take all of the comments in the database, convert them to JSON and then return that as JSON data. Now I'm going to go to the Nano Django documentation and there's a page on building APIs. As it says here, Nano Django has built in support for Django Ninja. And let me make the text bigger here so we can see this. What we have is an app.api decorator. Now that's going to be an instance of the Ninja API that is automatically registered at the URL slash API. And it will only be registered at that URL if it is used. So we have a very easy way to define API endpoints using Nano Django. Let's say we have this Django Ninja schema object that contains a string and a float. What we do is we create the function add here and we decorate it using the app.api.get decorator. So that will register the slash add URL after slash API. And then we can do whatever processing we want within the body of that function. So let's go back to VS Code and let's go back to the top of the file here. So underneath the comment, what I'm going to do is create a Django Ninja schema object. So let's create a class here that I'm going to call comment schema. And what that inherits from is app.ninja.schema. So you can get access to the Django Ninja API through the app.ninja attribute. And then we have the schema class that we're going to subclass here to create the comment schema. And let's imagine that our API is returning the text for the comment. So we can add the text field here and we can type hint that as a string. Once we have the schema, what we can do is write an API route in this application. So what we can do again is use the app decorator here, but we're going to access the .api property. And let's say on the get request to slash comments, we want to return a list of the comments using the schema above. So we can specify a response and the structure of that response should be a list of the comment schema objects. So let's now create the function and I'm going to call the function API underscore comments. And again, that's going to take the request as the first parameter. And all we need to do here is fetch the comments from the database. So comment.objects and let's fetch them all again. And in fact, let's keep it consistent with what we had before. So we're going to order by the created column in the database table. So let's pass that in here and fix this. So we're returning all of the comments ordered by when they were created with the most recent comment appearing first in the list. And we can now test this out by going to slash API slash comments. So let's go back to the browser. I'm on the comments page here, but if we add slash API before that, we can get the API response here. And if we pretty print that, you can see that it's giving us the text for each comment that we have in the database. And we get a list containing all of those comments. What we can do is amend the schema. So if we go back to our app.py file, we have the comment schema. Let's imagine we need the created field. We can add that to and set that to a date time object, which we need to import at the top. So from the date time module in Python, let's import the date time object. And again, if we save this now and go back to the API and refresh this and pretty print that, you can see we now get the created timestamp here as well as the text. And because the model object also has an implicit ID field, we can actually add the ID to the schema as well. And let's just make that an integer. And again, let's go back to our API and refresh this page. And you can see we now get the ID of each comment in the database. So the power of this is that we have access to Django Ninja through the app.ninja property. 
We can define schemas for our API responses and also for incoming requests. We specify the fields we expect to see and the types for those fields. And you have access to all of the other things provided by Django Ninja. For example, you can make some of the fields optional. And just like normal Django Ninja functions in Django, what we can do is specify the structure or the schema of our responses and then simply return an ORM statement from these views. So I think this is really cool. We have a Django application in a single file here. We've got the model, we've got the schema, and we've got the different endpoints or URLs that we want to support. But of course, this is not going to be suitable for large applications or even medium-sized applications. It might be very good for prototyping and sharing with other developers. They can simply run UV run with this inline script metadata at the top, and they can immediately see the application in effect. However, obviously, when you start applications, they may be small at the beginning, but they might grow very quickly and they might get out of the scope of a single file like this. So there is a way to convert the Nano Django application to a fully fledged Django app. In other words, we take the code in this single file and we explode it out into a normal structure in Django. So I'm going to go back to the Nano Django documentation on this. So we're back on that documentation and on the left hand sidebar, we have a section on converting to a full Django project. And as it says here, although Nano Django is great for simple apps and prototypes, it's strongly recommended not to use it beyond its intended scope. Anything more complex than a couple of models and views will benefit from the standard Django project structure. Now we have a nano Django convert command and we can convert the app.py object or in this case counter.py to a fully fledged Django application and we can provide the path in this command. And that is going to do its best to break up the application file that we provide into a proper Django project. And it's also going to copy over any templates and static files. And even if you have an SQLite database, it's going to copy that as well into the new project along with migrations. So let's try this convert command on our project. Let's go back to VS Code and let's expand the terminal and stop the server that we have here and clear it out. And let's use the UV run command. And we're going to run this with a dependency of Nano Django. And this is because we're not running app.py directly, so we don't have access to the inline script metadata. So we need to tell the UV run command to use nano Django here. And once that's installed, we can run the nano Django convert command and point it to app.py. And we provide the path to the new location for the fully fledged Django application. So I'm going to put this in a directory called nano Django, let's say converted here. And let's try running this command. It resolves the dependencies and you can see that it's added that nano Django convert application on the left hand side. Now what I'm going to do if we minimize the terminal here is just look at the left hand side. So we have a manage.py script and we have a project directory that contains standard things in Django such as settings.py and urls.py. And within the project we also have an app directory here that contains models.py. And if we look at models.py we have the comment model that we created. We also have urls.py with the two URLs that we actually added to the nano Django app.py file. And we have views.py as well. And it contains this function here, which I think is just manually added. But the ones that we have at the bottom here, such as comments, those were ones that we added to the project. And the same logic has been copied over. And there's also an api.py file. And that's where the Django Ninja comment schema and also the api route slash comments, that's where these are located in this project. And that's conventional if you have a Django Ninja application. You can put your API routes and logic within, for example, an API.py file, and that's where that's going to live. So that's all I want to show in this video. I think Nano Django is really cool for prototyping, and it's very interesting to see how we can write a Django application in a single file and still have access to things like models, views, API views, and Django Ninja schemas. And with Nano Django, you can also get easy access to the Django admin. If you want to enable the admin, all you need to do is pass an admin URL to the Django object when you're creating your application object. So thanks for watching. If you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel, check the coffee page that we have in the description of the video. And finally, just to reiterate from the start of the video, you might want to take advantage of this amazing data camp offer. And that's up until the 10th of November, you get free and complete access to the entire data camp platform. So check that out. There's a link in the comments and the description. And thank you again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.